That's a uh, interesting question. I-, I thought the Oscars were okay. Um, I like Seth MacFarlane as host. I thought, like, well, okay, uh, the, the Shatner. Okay, well, the Shatner thing in the beginning, it was very Family Guy, but it was really weird. Yeah, I didn't understand. See, well, here's the thing: when anyone hosts the Oscars, no one does well. Yeah. I stand correct. They all seem really uncomfortable. You know what I mean? It's like actually the only time that was really funny was when um like Anne Hathaway and James Franco, who was high at the time, were hosting the Oscars. That was just hilarious. And James Franco was just yeah. Like, but if I'm you watch some of the old clips with Bob Hope, he freaking knocked it out of the park. But and that's Billy just, Crystal was well because well, he's like he's he, yeah. he, he yeah. <laughs> beloved man in all Carson the planet. Carson did it. They loved him. These are yeah. really beloved people. Modernly, no one can do it. I, I I think so. I, after Billy Crystal, uh, who who's done the Oscars, that's been really good. I, I heard a lot of people talk about the next guy. The guy will be Kimmel because yeah, okay, the, yeah. the Matt Damon thing and a whole other slew I of things. Can't stand Kimmel. Really? He's, I just don't like him. I remember hearing the story of like, uh, Joe McHale from uh, Community was saying how like you know he's like how Jimmy is everyone's best friend and he and he, and he he's like. If Jimmy wanted to be president, he could do it. Just because he's he's that nice and, and lovable a guy. You know, I, I think there's a possibility, but again, it, it was okay. Yeah. I felt Argo, eh, whatever. Shout out to Christopher Plummer though, where the Order of Canada pin on his uh, on his suit yeah, jacket. Yeah, I was like, sweet. yeah, it's pretty baller. But again, I find out with the Oscars most times, like, well, if you really like movies, um, you don't care about the Oscars because, like, you know, you've watched enough stuff, and you're like, well, why isn't that nominated? Like, we're like, we're all these movies, like, you know. That's part of the fun is the debate is yeah. the who's getting snubbed, who should have won. Because I, uh, what's it? I watched that movie, this French movie called Holy Motors, like, this weekend. It was like, I think one of the most beautiful pieces of film I've ever seen, and it came out like in the 2012 and nominated for nothing. Well, I think, well, some movies do slip through the cracks. Like, it it's, it's Goodfellas pro- didn't win the Best Picture, so let's remember that. Well, see, no, it Dances with Wolves Pulp did. Fiction yeah. didn't. Yeah, so Shakespeare in love, you know, yeah. whatever a traffic one, and that was oh, mer, mer. So I it, don't mind traffic situations. as a movie, but yeah, it's not it's not best picture. That's that's terrible. That's terrible. Yeah, but anyways. overall, it's just weird thing. <sighs> one of those situations. Meanwhile, in the Heroes World Studios, I'm joined today by Justin Elliott, Neil Speakman, and Andre Greenwich. Hello, hello. What up? You're not going to say Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we, we have a special kind of guest uh, sitting here, uh, our friend uh, in... Good friend, Andrew Wright. <laughs> he's just saying, yeah, he's just, just going to chime yeah. in every once in a yep. while. So we're going to start off right now with Marvel because it's the biggest stack. Yeah, there's a lot of books that came out this week. So what do we have this week, Justin? Well, this week, um, starting off, we have uh, Avenging Spider-Man uh, 17, written by Christopher Yost and drawn by Paco Medina. Um, this issue is more him teaming up with the, uh, the Future Foundation, and, I, and it is, uh, yeah, <laughs> and it is, um, the, the new Superior Spider-Man, so it's kind of a, kind of a different mm. feel to things, because, like, you know, Dr. Octopus wasn't really a guy who, like, you know, was known for his beloved, his love, his love of children, um, but also, what's pretty awesome is, a very special character shows up, who I am a huge fan of, that, I'm not sure if a lot of people know Orion? about Orion? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I wish it was <laughs> Avenging Spider-Man. It was not Orion. It, oh. was, uh, it was the um, the bounty hunting uh, cy- <laughs> the bounty hunting cyborg Death's Head from uh, usually he spent a lot of time in like Marvel UK stuff. Yeah, and uh, he shows up in this, and I am very happy. Yeah. So yeah, so he's going to be showing up in um, Iron Man as well. So definitely a Justin pick. Yes, yeah. continue <laughs> very much so. Also this week we have um, Deadpool Killstreak by Colin Bunn. Who uh, again? He does a lot of stuff. All work on the independent book, The Sixth Gun, and he does a lot of Deadpool stuff for Marvel and like kind of like you know small things here and there. Um, no, this issue is uh, Deadpool and Tom Sawyer, and um, it was actually pretty fun. Like I, I, again, like I find like it's whimsical. You know, yeah, because classic illustrated was always like listen. It was that thing when you were a kid. It's like I want a comic book. And then your parents were like, you can't have a comic book. You have to read a real book. And you're like, what if I read Moby Dick as a comic book? So this is kind of like you know, hearkening back to those days of screwing one, screwing one against your parents. It's pretty good. I, I would highly, I would highly say if you enjoy. Oh, and, like, and who does the cover, Justin? Oh yes, um, cover is done by our our good friend, uh, friend of the store and uh, friend friend of the show, Mike Del Mundo. Nice. So Deadly he, Mike he, for he, those he, who want to find him on DeviantArt. Yep, Deadly Mike. Also this week, um, again, big book. This is a big. This is a big book. It may not seem like it at the time, <clears> but. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 0.1 has... <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Marvel, and your numbering. <laughs> well, I yeah. kind of understand why they're doing this with this one, though, because with, like, I mean, I have absolutely no idea. Um, like, I haven't 
followed or read any Guardians of the Galaxy. So for somebody who's not informed like me, but why uh, not a zero? That's what they traditionally did in the past. Why a zero point one? Well, cause cause remember, remember these. Is there going to be zero point, point two? Is there going to be a point were five? Well, they use, like Marvel does the point ones now, right? That's kind of the thing. It's the jumping on yeah. point. It's the sort of so like you whatever know. point one, right? So like I guess is like you know. The they cover. just had to one up DC because DC did zero. So this is oh, this is a point one. We can yeah, still slip in and do a zero. Actually, Marvel they do negative one. Yeah, Marvel, 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 Marvel had negative one one back in the day. Industry, yes, has done negative one. Yeah, minus yeah, ones they were called. Yeah, 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 yeah. The minus one books from back. Uh, I think like early, like like, like late early 90s? Two, late nineties, early two thousand. Yeah, the, the, the negative one era. Um, what's really cool about like Guardians of the Galaxy is again, it's uh, you kind of your jumping on point. Um, I guess this is kind of how they're going to be sh- introducing these characters back into the universe since they've been kind of gone for so long, and or just the different take they've been having for uh, having for a while. So um, again, this is kind of your introduction point. Steve McNevin's doing the art, Bendis is writing the book. It's one of those things where, yeah, look forward to this because again, There's a lot of hype around it too. They're basing a movie on this thing. That's, yeah. that's kind of why it's. Do you think they're going to use this iteration of the Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy? Yeah. Should well, they? Just, just, shouldn't, I'm just looking through the book. Shouldn't they look more like Chris Pratt at this standpoint? Uh, I think they drew it before Chris Pratt. <laughs> Don't worry. Maybe that's why right. it's that's a point one and two. not the official yes. number one issue. That, yeah. You know, hence why it's a point one. In the next one. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so hopefully, hopefully that gets sorted out. Also this week, um, a book that's uh, Neil, Neil and I's favorite. FF by um, Matt Fraction and Mike Allred. Again, this issue is just really fun. Um, there's a lot of kind of interesting kind of panel work and just like entertaining things that happen in this issue. I believe one of the the, mold, the hyper hyper evolved mold children falls in love with She Hulk. Uh, I wouldn't. Should, I know, right? Uh, so you should like again check this out if you're looking for a book that's not, again not going to be not going to be this kind of super heavy downer. And just something really kind of light, fun, and again, Marvel pop art, right? This is kind of like you know, harkening back to that kind of that swinging '60s era that uh, Jack and Stan gave us. So, check it out. Also, this week, a book, uh, a book that uh, maybe asked a question was reading it earlier was, um, why do they make romance comics anymore? And like, okay. <laughs> I, know, I know that sounds kind of gay, but at the same time, though, it's Not like there's well, anything wrong with that. But yeah, no, no, no. Just saying, like, it's like you know. But at the same time, the romance comics were kind of a big part of, like, you know, 50s Marvel era and, like, you know, the kind of 60s and kind of how a lot of, like, guys like John Romita, like, kind of came up. And this issue of Hawkeye deals with a character who showed up before. Um, he, bought a, he bought the car off of her. He, he bought a car off of her in uh, nice. one issue. So she's back. And this is kind of, kind of, kind of like almost like the romance kind of story. Every other page has kind of, like, this interesting splash page that it harkens back to that era of romance comics. So give it a check out because it's something, like, you know, very much... If you like if you like art like I like art, then you'll understand why this yeah, is it's a, a really very cool creative book. book too. And it's, Hawkeye's yeah. been solid since the first oh, yeah. uh, first issue. It's been a great, very very good read. Yeah, Not he, the Hawkeye you've seen in the Avengers, definitely no. but well, worth well, reading. He does stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he he does things and doesn't you know get knocked unconscious with the punch. He's got a bit of an like an everyman attitude as well. He's yeah. just sort of like that regular Joe kind of guy, and they've really kind of played that up in, exactly. the, in the series so far. And, and overall, the book yeah, the book has been fantastic. I think we mention this every time we every time an issue comes out. Also, this week, um, Daniel Way's Thunderbolts, and the whole point again, the whole point of this book right now is uh, the Thunderbolts team. They're trying to um, bring back Samuel Stearns as the leader, and uh, I think I believe they're using the kind of like a crazy red like what is the name of that red energy? Did they, did they name that thing? In the book, it's it's I, I don't know what they're calling, it, but it's it's something to do with radiation again. It's just some so sort of radiation. To bring him back, the leader. They're trying to yeah. supercharge his brain again. Well, because it's, it's weird. Cause I know, like, okay, like you know, things that are green, gamma radiation. Like you know, like, there's different types of like radiation all around the universe. But, yeah, <laughs> but but they never. Uh, but but they never actually like, can kind of like really go into. <laughs> Stop packing your hands on the table. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they never actually kind of go into like you know what happens like like what this energy is. So I'm kind of interested to kind of find that. Out. I know like in the one of the Hulk books, they talk about how the negative zone drains them as they, if they get too close to it. But that's about all I really was told about this. So, but overall, like again, the book's been fun. Uh, Steve Dillon's doing it right now. But eventually, I know um, in the news previews they, they announced that uh, what's his name, Phil Noto is going to be taking over. So. Again, look out! Look out for that. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a really big change because right now the book is looking and feeling a little bit like a Marvel Max with Dylan and yeah. There's guns blazing, body parts are flying. It'll still happen. It's just, just going to look more like you know, uh, more painted. <laughs> more painted. <laughs> painted. But yeah. 
Also this week, uh, I know a book Andre was like really excited to see was um, Punisher Warzone Five of Five. This is the end of um, the crying. Over here. I'm yeah. crying. Yeah, I'm crying. Need yeah. tissue? Yeah, I need a box. Okay, please. Need a box tissue. Yeah. So again, this is the last issue of the, like the Avengers saying, "Hey, we're taking down the Punisher finally." Um, I can't spoil anything about this issue because yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's very much worth your reading. Um, just pick it up. If, you, if you've been reading this, you're probably going to pick it up. And if you haven't been reading this, you're probably going to, like, you know... If you're not reading this, you need to come in and read it because yeah, it's, true. it's been the probably one of the best uh, best utilization of the Punisher. Best in-universe one. Best in-universe, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, you're going to look at the Avengers in a whole new light. Uh, just, just a fantastic, fantastic piece of writing. And... Uh, you know, uh, Neil and I were talking about it earlier, and it's it's just a shame that uh, they ended uh, uh, Rucka's run on it. Yeah, uh, way too soon. Yeah. They, way, they, way, they, way too they soon. They cut the cord on this book way too well, soon. Well, I think they're doing something and new I with the Punisher soon, and that's it kind of... It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter, because this this is where it's at. Like, if they if they allowed them to continue with this story arc, it's fantastic. There's a little thing in the letters column and uh, where they thank the readers for, for sticking by them. The whole run yeah. was only 21 issues, uh, including this five-parter. And, uh, you know, they say, yeah, you know, we wanted to do more, but thanks, Marvel, for letting us end the way end it the way we want to. Yeah. yeah at the and very least, they, they gave them that. It was just fantastic like i i guys you got to come in you got to read this book and even if you say oh, i'm not a punisher fan this is not the punisher you know this yeah. is this is just awesome it's not the dolph lundgren punisher no it's all. not any punisher <laughs> not the franken castle it's, it's not frank it's it's, oh, not, even, no, it's not even um garth ennis's punisher this oh, yeah. is this is almost like uh if you've read any of uh brew uh Rucka's stuff before it's real world yeah uh you well, know he fits in is actually a good comparison yeah, yeah brew yeah they're very similar right? yeah. how I mean, he wrote captain this is the America. punisher that like you know when you want to put him in the marvel universe like this is this is how you fit him in because you know and, 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 and it highlights because i know yeah. you guys spoke of before he's more of a military tactician in this book rather exactly. than just a guy it, it who kicks down a, a door and to, yeah. the, to the old punisher yeah, war journal kind of and guy. stuff but it, it's just really cool because he plans out like everything in this book oh yeah and it and, and at some parts you're like it doesn't seem believable but just how he writes the dialogue and he writes the characters, you're like, yeah, he could do this to these guys. This is how and, he, well, uh, if you if you were gonna do this, this is how this you'd is be how doing you it. would do it. And it, it was just fantastic. So I'm very uh, sad. I'm very upset. And I, I think the the only thing I could say is that the guys at, at at Marvel is they must not read their own comics because I can't see how anybody could read any of Ruck, uh, any yeah. of uh, the, the they just this, looked at the sales Punishers. charts. They just looked at the numbers and said it's not selling twenty thousand. Well, and they're going um, to lose it. They're going to kick themselves because I know he's not writing anything for Marvel no, right now. Right oh, he's now. Done. You, 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 like you know what? I, I would have given them the finger too. Well, because, again, it's kind of uh, the same thing that happened with again like with Hitman's Fantastic Four, where it's like he's like I had all this stuff kind of planned, mm-hmm. and then they're relaunching they the universe. The so. Yeah, but I can't just keep going. Yeah, but keep the difference is that. that Hickman was elevated to do more Avengers, and, and Hickman yeah. was given like what five years or four years. Where yeah, he said twenty one issues, you know, yeah. and, and and I'm pretty sure they probably you know went to Rucka first and said, hey, you know, do you want to do Punisher? Or he might have said, here's my pitch for Punisher, and it's it's fantastic, and I'm I'm I'm, excited. I'm really sad because the way the book ends, I I want to read more of that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like. Like yeah, guys, come in. It's a five-part series. Uh, you know the trade will probably. But isn't that what you want in a, in a finale of a comic you, book? Yeah, you want the, something the, yearning for more rather than it, just, no. You're nah. very true, but but it, the way the series was going and, and and stuff, it was just it like it. It's it was abrupt. It was too abrupt. Like it wasn't like ended in a good way. Where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm happy because it ended so good, and and I know I want more. Like you know, it could have honestly, they probably could have run this particular story arc with the characters that they've introduced and stuff. Oh yeah, a little bit longer for, for, for probably another year. I, I'm gonna say at least easy. another eight nine issues, easy. And then it, and if they wanted to end it so it wouldn't get stale, fine. Because some books go a little bit too long. Yeah. And they run on and they run on. I wasn't sick of this Punisher. It wasn't the it was just, just getting started. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't. And the, they just, Introduce their own poochie character. Yeah, you know, like, uh, what's going on? There's a dog that talks. What's up? So that's a shout out, Simpsons. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then also this week we have um, another Dead Mighty Mundo cover um, slash like well he didn't draw the interior of this book but uh, this book is drawn by George Molina who I'm actually becoming a really big fan of. His I find his stuff is more kind of like um, a f- kind of like a faster uh, Olivia Copiel. So so is is there. Not as, not as heavily detailed, but still really works well. Um, X Men Legacy is out this week. Um, more adventures of like you know the schizophrenic, the schizophrenic son of Professor X, um, Legion. So again, what's been going on in the book has kind of been this inter- interesting thing of like him trying to like figure out 
like what he wants to do or, or what he's supposed to be doing because he's like, well, I'm the son of the most powerful student in the world or the powerful telepath in the world who had this huge dream. It's like Martin Luther King's children like not living, like, like mm-hmm. doing anything really. That's mm-hmm. kind of they like, haven't really done anything. They just make money off of his speech. Well, these kind of bicker about his speech. Yeah, that's true. They own the intellectual property, yeah. so they can sell it to Sprint. Didn't Jesse Jackson's kid just get like? nabbed for buying a whole bunch of stuff using taxpayer money and <laughs> oh <Nice>. Jesse Jackson <laughs> <laughs> continue yes but yeah but, but, but overall again this book has been really like it's been interesting because at first it takes a bit to kind of get into and um, I think by this point now I'm actually kind of like I'm really kind of digging it because again it's using like a lot of like what's going on in the X-Men universe it's a unique book as, too. Ba- as a backdrop yeah again if you haven't been checking it out we do have we should have a lot of the issues Worth checking out, and like it, uh, this book is only gonna get better as it goes along. And now we have uh, what I call the Uncanny Block. <laughs> there are three books this week. Um, <laughs> there's the Uncanny Avengers, the Uncanny X Force, and the Uncanny X Men. So everything's getting uncanny. So with Uncanny Avengers, you have again Rick Remander writing it, uh, John Cassidy drawing it. This is John Cassidy's last issue, unfortunately. Is it? Yes. Who's, who's taking over after this? After this, it is, um, oh, the guy did Green Lantern. Um, oh, what's his Not name? Rice. No, no, no. It's, uh, oh, Justin, I'm drawing a brain for it. You really like his stuff. It's almost pastel type of, uh, like, watercolors. He did. What else he do? Green Lantern. He did some other Marvel stuff. Oh, Akuna? Akuna. Did yeah, yeah. Akuna. Oh, interesting. Yeah, nice. okay, yeah. He's taking over, yeah. Okay, so that's not... That's not too bad. No, yeah, it's not like, oh, man, like it's over. But no, yeah, Daniel Kuhn is taking over. Um, book so far has been like pretty awesome. It's kind of shown this kind of like, you know, hybrid kind of collection between of mutants and like non-mutants, like working together as superheroes. And actually, Remender's worked with Akuna on, on Kenny X-Force yeah. in that run, so that is a good fit, actually. So, so, so this is, again, this book is like really, really picking up. We do have the first four issues of it, and that kind of like, I guess... Is the first kind of story, I guess, and it's worth checking out, like highly. I'd say so. Yeah, this is. It's got the big guns on it. It's the big Avengers and the big yeah. X Men. You've got yeah. Thor, Captain America. You've got Wolverine. You've got Havoc. You got Scarlet, uh, Which, Scarlet and, Witch, and, and Rogue, Rogue. Who, 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 who's never been an Avenger, though she did fight the Avengers when she first appeared. Yeah, she so, seems like she's like the kind of yeah. the black sheep of the group too, right? Yeah. She's kind of yeah. She's just bit of the outsider. Miss Marvel. Is that how the rules? Well, that's where she got her flight and, and super strength yeah, yeah. and powers and stuff like that. So there might be a little resentment. From Avengers the Annual Ten. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, also Uncanny X Force this week. Uh, again, this this is kind of a, a bit of a big return because uh, Bishop comes back uh, from the future. Well, yeah. we don't know, we don't, we don't even know anymore because Bishop had, like he had a whole thing. He went crazy and he had like you know one arm and he was chasing cable Tried around. Tried to kill the Messiah. Yeah, hope. Chased yeah. cable all Ooh. around. Tough and times. You got, and you got the sort of the all female team and Puck. Yeah. So sweet. <laughs> Puck and his woman. Yeah. What? And Please. if you don't know who Puck is, he's the short Canadian from Alpha. Canadian. He's Wolverine's is buddy. he Canadian? Is that? Yeah, he's that? Canadian. Yeah. I thought he was a medieval knight or whatever that, that got shrunk. Can we can we get a fact check on that? What's Puck? Uh, 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 John Ho, you want to check the facts on Puck can, over there? Can we, can we can, can you start? Because I don't know what the real. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Puck's definitely Canadian, part of the original Alpha Flight. Amen. John brother. Byrne, first 12 issues, sweetest comic book run ever. I'm still in shock. Guardian, oh my goodness, Heather killed him, blew up. <laughs> Bam, definitely Canadian. Well, well, no, 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 but what's his powers? Can anyone... No, well, yeah, yeah. Where they come oh, from? Where powers. did they come from? He's like, he, uh, was a, he was a seven-foot dude who trapped a genie inside of him. a genie inside of him. He's got super agility, <laughs> super strength, what? and stuff like that. Yeah, dude, look it up. I thought he was like a medieval knight that was cursed, and then he That's be- the Black shrunk. Knight. Is that Knight? the Black Knight? Yeah, he well, he has, he has a genie inside of him. That's why. Really? He, that's why he's tiny. Is it is it, a, is it like Robin Williams' genie or like why do you think the genie? You get from... all the women on Uncanny X Force, man. I don't know. He's, he's, he's the only dude. Do it the ladies, even like in Wolverine and Hell. That was oh, sort yeah. of like an underlying. <laughs> Come on, he's he's puck. He's got uh, he's he's got okay. the, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Continue. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so again, this is the return of Bishop, and what seems to be happening here is uh, again not spoiling anything is uh spoil it. There's uh, different powers going on. Bishop uh, Bishop is not the same guy he was before. So, uh, I, well, now he has instead of having a Jerry curl like the barge, he has his. Uh, <laughs> oh, John, that picture. <laughs> Put it back up. The gold. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, barge picture. picture. Yeah. Uh, instead of having, having a Jerry curl, he now has he has dreadlocks and a beard. Like, so but he, wasn't he rocking that in the Bishop uh, series that he had? Bishop had an ongoing. Yeah, series the last X Men series. Yeah, yeah he, he was doing that. I guess he went back to that. Can we just fashion him to look like I think I take him seriously? If if Marvel went to Denzel Washington, can we just use your face? 
Hell no, I, brother. I believe... Forget honestly. Forget real people in comics. You know what? That's that's ludicrous. I don't want my character to look anything. Sorry, like Samuel Jackson. Yeah, no. Forget that, man. Because all of a sudden, then they got to shoehorn these people in, and now we got shoehorn Samuel L. Jackson the, <laughs> as as Captain America's son. Not sorry, not Captain America. Nick Fury's son. Called Nick Fury Jr. in Secret Avengers. And yeah, all okay. Yeah. Listen, that was that was that, kinda, that was kind of bizarre. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Okay, yeah. okay. retracted. Okay. retracted. <laughs> <laughs> but, but overall, again, Ron Garnier on this book is really making it like really making it pop. Um, his art's a lot a lot cleaner than a lot of his earlier stuff I've seen, and it's really, again, I'm looking forward to more Uncanny X Force every time it comes out. So, and Psylocke, wow, yeah, wow, awesome in that book. I know, and then also we have Uncanny X Men. Which again, this is Cyclops' team of all like the again all the mutants who had kind of their powers altered by the Phoenix Force. Now they're kind of like again on their kind of revolutionary kick, revolutionary team. Chris Bacall doing the art, Bendis writing it. Nothing much to be said other than like you know you're gonna How enjoy many books this. Is Bendis and also doing? He's doing all of all, them. He's doing all I the X Men. So. Like he's yeah. doing two X Men books, so a new and an uh, uncanny. Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. Powers. When does he sleep? He doesn't. Okay. He, he blows up Twitter like all the time. I don't even know. Do you think he's one man? Do you th- yeah, you think he ghostwrites? Like he gets other people to do it for him? I don't think he ghostwrites. I, I think there could be two. The there's ultimate like f- clone saga could be where Bendis got There's like, there's like four Bendis. He cloned himself. So, so are we doing a prestige thing where he clones himself and he gets another guy to step in his place and yes. for him? Yes. I do like the prestige. The prestige was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Prestige. Okay. okay yeah. I think also one thing to point out about that book too is uh, All New X-Men is probably one of our most popular Marvel Now books. And this, spectacular. this book here is essentially... A kind of a companion parallel Spins book right to that. Yeah. So if you're really enjoying it's all new X Men and you're a little late to that party, yep. jump on this one. We have the issue one. This is issue number two. Uh, and you know you don't have to read it, but I strongly suggest reading it because at some point these two books are going to start interweaving. You're going to start seeing some crossover, and if you're kind of following both, I think you're going to get you know the most out of the story that Bendis wants to tell. Yeah. And also, uh, finally this week via Marvel is uh, Young Avengers, which has what what yeah again this has three characters I really like in it. I'm just trying to like, and I'm starting to try to like like the other characters more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. Listen, I'm not perfect. Um, the three characters I'd say are the three characters I like the most are um, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, Kid Loki, and uh, Novar Novar Captain Marvel. So those three characters I'm kind of cool with. And uh, now we have Miss America, who I'm. Getting familiar with, and uh, Wiccan and Hulkling, I guess, who, who, who I vaguely... Yeah, they were in the first row. No, they're, they're, they're in the, the very beginning. Yeah. They're very beginning. Yeah, yeah. They're one an Iron Lad. With our boy Iron Lad. Oh, man. Iron I Lad. love him so much. Yeah. I want more books with him. Man. Just want more Kang. Only you. Kang the Conqueror. Kang want, the Conqueror? I want Kang, I want Sinestro, I want a buddy cop movie. And Booster Gold. Make it so. That'd be sweet. <laughs> That's a good idea. I think, I think we should pitch that. <laughs> Done. But yeah, so, so again, more Young Avengers. Again, this is the kind of book that, like, uh... I find that, you know, this is actually drawing younger people into comics. So that's kind of like, you know, it's interesting because, like, Andre, how do you feel about this book? You, no, that's you, just like, like, like a big fan it's, of it? It's, or? It's, it's a book that, that it's targeting its audience yeah. and the word spreading. And it, it, it's bringing in some of those uh, kind of like, I don't want to say teen angst because that, that sounds cheesy. But it's it's dealing with younger heroes and what, uh, you know, what problems they, they are in. Like, uh, yeah. the first issue had some good comedy yeah, in exactly, it. Exactly, But yeah. the, 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 the cliffhanger at the end, it was... It was basically how doing a nice thing can go wrong. Yeah. So it's it's definitely I would say its target audience is is probably looking at a teen and a young adolescent, but it's definitely a book like hey I, I read it and, and caught yeah, it. Exactly, and yeah. you don't have to have read all of the previous stuff. If you did, great. But I think it pretty much stands on its own, and and uh, and that was the purpose of Marvel now in the first place, yep. right? So yeah, at least they're, and the art's this. really nice. It's clean, you know. It's 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 definitely a pretty solid book, and it's a good book. I think that well, it's funny because to me it kind of reminds me of like you know, like kind of early Ditko Spider Man, yes. where that thing of like, hey, this is a book about the, these kids who are having these kind of like you know issues that kids today kind of have, as, except as a, they have superpowers. Yeah, and, exactly. And, as as opposed to like you know, oh hey, we're just gonna like you know. I just kind of tell you the same superhero stories. They seem younger, they, like they're younger, yes, but they have no problems. They're just like you know, it's yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a problem. pretty, yeah, it's a pretty solid book, and it's probably something that might be sliding under the radar. But you know, just give it a flip through. Yeah. I think you might be turn pleasant. on your radars. Yep, pleasant. It's really the question. Things to say. All right, Neil, what do you got for the DC side of things? Well, DC's uh, once uh, once again got a nice little uh, varied selection of books. So um, first off, we got Aquaman, which is the Throne of Atlantis epilogue. So if you have been following this event, uh, Justice League. 
League, I believe, came out. Was it last week or the week before? Yeah. A fantastic uh, ending to that whole storyline. Uh, you know, battles galore, chaos, and essentially at the end of that, uh, Aquaman. Um, without spoiling too much he steps up he steps up in a big way and this issue looks like it's sort of hinting at him going back to atlantis to sort of uh deal with the aftermath of throne of atlantis and the covers got him essentially looking like he's in prison so uh you know definitely if you're you're reading that series you definitely want to be if uh, if not it it was a great little four-part crossover three parts i think justice league three parts aquaman fantastic that the series had everything i know i've mentioned it before the that last justice league issue i thought was one of the best uh but this the the epilogue issue and i would argue that the uh the introduction of justice league of america all kind of spans out of what happened in the throne it of does, Atlantis. Yeah. yeah and that's what you and get when you was, have the same writer yeah, the doing, same all, the writer doing yeah. all the books and it's it's fantastic it ties like, in really neatly like aquaman like you're gonna see in this in this issue if you read it he he's got a burden on his shoulders he's got pressures from all around he doesn't know who he can trust but there's a really cool like heartfelt moment in there uh, that I think you guys will really dig. It's, and it's, and it's, let's not forget the Aquaman challenge that Andre has dropped. So it's, it's still, it's, it's it's still, still on. up there. Nobody, still on. Nobody's uh, returned yeah. it, you know. So I'm, I'm uh, we also got good. a personal favorite book of mine, which is The Flash, which is wrapping up the Gorilla Warfare storyline, which has been running for about five issues, which is uh, Flash uh, dealing with Gorilla Grodd and, Fight them and fighting in the, in the <laughs> Speed Force. Um, with art and uh, story by Francis Manipal, and um, I've been a huge fan of this series, not only for the story, but for the art. Um, so if you've been following this, which is, it's been a very popular book at Heroes World, definitely pick that up. Um, we've also got the part four of the Wrath of the First Lanterns uh, in Red Lantern 17. Um, last week was Green Lantern, Green Lantern Core, and Green Lantern New Guardians, which is essentially part one, two, and three, and this is now part four of that series. Um, big things happening in this. Uh, Johns is essentially uh, kind of at the helm of the whole story, but he's got uh, the different writers sort of you know working their magic on each book. This is uh, Peter Milligan still on this book. Yeah. Uh, the art has been fantastic since issue number one. Uh, you know, pretty violent, uh, bloody book, um, and of course the covers. Uh, hinting at that as well um but definitely if you're um if you're looking to get on jeff john's sort of final hurrah for the green lantern character um you know normally i wouldn't uh, sort of be recommending you having to read all the crossover books but this one definitely looks like it's uh linked all together I think that's, that's one of the strengths because um you know green lantern was one of the books that was kind of untouched when they did the whole new 52 um and it seemed like it's been like you know one event after the next but none of them have felt forced. Like John's, nope. he's had this. I think must have been pl- planned out chapter and chapter. Oh, this, is, yeah, this was where it was it all is, going. From, yeah, from the it beginning. has been really solid. Uh, you know, uh, J- John mentioned like the love of introducing the new character Simon Baz. Uh, we're seeing the return of Black Hand from the Blackest Night. Yep. We're seeing the ramifications of 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 how basically messed up the Guardians have 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 have. Uh, set the universe and the stuff is coming to bite them in the ass and I really like that you know this this whole element of the first lantern like what was their attempt and it really seeds uh, you know plants uh, the seeds well the seeds we see the roots of the whole idea of where all the different emotions and the power rings came yeah, from and how so it happens. wasn't something that I don't think John said hey let's have a rainbow of colors do things no he had a plan this is where it goes and this is where it began and, I think and that's, it's awesome and I think it's that's really why good. Batman and Green Lantern both sort of weren't you know on the chopping block so to speak during the reboot they I think had this sort of plan they were going seen it in Batman yeah. as well it's sort of gone somewhere to the point now where uh, Death of the Family sort of essentially rebooted the franchise in a, in a, in a subtler way and I think the same thing is about to happen. Yeah, in Green yeah. it's, it's it's you got to give kudos to DC. I could imagine they called them in the office saying, "This is what we're having. This is what our plan is." They said, "Well, this is actually what we have planned. Mm-hmm. Here's our chart. This is what yeah. I have. I'm not playing on my butt." This is where we're and, going. And they oh, said, I "You know what? We respect you enough. We're not going to touch this." I think that's this. exactly right. I think I'm pretty sure. You know, well, I'm hoping, not pretty sure. They probably pulled all the all the writers and editors in, and they they probably had a blackboard or something. Said, "Okay, these are all our properties. These are all our our houses." Unfortunately, the only two that are working and selling and are good are Batman and Green Lantern. Yeah. Let's see what we can do to bring everything up to par while slotting those two books and keeping them similar yet accessible. Hmm. And I think that's one of the things that Jeff John does in, in any of yep. his books. You know, like if you're if you're reading only his Green Lantern, yeah. you know, you get the story. 
but then you see the bigger picture when you're reading the other four. Yeah, or five actually, books. we had this conversation earlier. Actually, where we were talking about how like. Um, if you look at Jeff Johns' Flash run, he took, like, you know, the Flash we did that had, like, you know, really just kind of jokey, bizarre villains and made them, like, the, the most interesting... Iron Heights, baby. Yeah, like, made the most interesting characters, shot. like, in the higher DC universe for, like, you know, the next, like, what, like, four or five years they were, they were all there. It was just amazing, so... And I think that's also why I really enjoyed the, the Flash book by Manipul, because he's yeah. essentially taken that and run with it, you know, pun intended, so... Um, you know, definitely. Yeah, definitely so guys, check, check out, out Jeff John's stuff. Yeah, always available in trade. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we keep it in I stock. Think, I think it's starting to be, be releasing those, uh, his Flash, like Omnibuses, omnibuses and yeah. soft cover too, so eventually. So, yeah, like something you should definitely. And speaking of on. spinning offs, we've got the new Talon book, Talon Great number segue. five, which is uh, Scott Snyder um, still guiding it. Uh, he's sort of co writing it with uh, Jim's Tinian in the, thir- uh, the fourth. Uh, with art by Gillum March. This has been a really, really solid book. I had a really good feeling about this book from from the beginning, and I've been pleasantly surprised that it's uh, lived up to the hype. Um, you've got a really cool um, kind of assassin meets thief storyline going on. Uh, the, the, this one talent is being chased by the Court of Owls. They sort of want him gone. So that Court of Owls storyline is still playing out in this book um, very heavily. And, um, you know, I can't say enough good things about this book. We still do have the first four issues in stock. We probably won't have them for much longer. So if you've been kind of waiting to jump on this book, uh, now is the yeah, time. It's more more of the owls, and it's, yeah. it's been fantastic. And the art has been great, so highly, highly recommend that book. Um, we've also got Teen Titans number 17, which is uh, one of the few books that essentially kind of um, uh, kind of continues the death of the family storyline as, as essentially an, an epilogue book. We saw that in Red Hood and the Outlaws uh, last week, and this week we're seeing in Teen Titans with, uh, uh, is it Red Robin or? Red Robin, yeah. Red Robin. So, uh, you know, definitely if you were enjoying Death of the Family, um, you definitely want to pick this up. If you've been reading Teen Titans, you know, I don't have to sell you on this book at all. So definitely uh, keep an eye out for that one. Uh, we've got Batman Dark Knight, uh, which has been a really popular book. Um, it hasn't really been tied into the whole uh, Death of the Family Court of Owls storyline. It's sort of been its own entity uh, during this uh, kind of uh, DC New 52 reboot, but it's been very popular. Uh, we got a bit of a kind of a crazy Mad Hatter-esque uh, storyline uh, about to begin in this one. Uh, really cool cover, and uh, you know, if you've been reading this book, it's again one of our more popular books. All the Batman books are, are very popular at the store. Um, but leads me into uh, the book I was most looking forward to this week anyway, and then things started leaking on the news. You may have seen it on uh, on CNN, on uh, you know CP24 today or yesterday. Really? They, 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 they hit that up it too? It's all Global, over the place. Yeah. Uh, Batman Incorporated number eight, uh, RIP, with uh, the Robin signal uh, insignia, uh, you know, making up the, the, the R and the RIP. And the, and the cover is an homage to the Batman RIP cover yeah. uh, that yeah, Alex fantastic. Ross Fantastic cover. Had, had painted originally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to spoil it. You've probably heard the spoilers already, but it definitely uh, lives up to its billing. This series has been uh, very good, um, you know, hearkening back to the pre New 52 days. Yeah. And um, Morrison's essentially, you know, you're either a fan or you're not. I am a fan. So uh, I've been thoroughly enjoying this book, and I'm really uh, interested to see where this book goes. Not so much to see what happens in this issue, uh, you know, because I think we all kind of know what's going to happen, but where it goes from here, especially with the character of Damien, who is they've really built up in the last probably couple years to, you know, an important member of the Bat family and a very... Uh, well, the, well, the only trench coated Batman later on. Not only <laughs> that, the only one that actually has some vigor to him. The rest of them Absolutely. are all just kind of bland. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's sort of the, the kind of the black sheep of the of the Bat family, a bit of a rebel. And it's uh, his his sort of story arc, his character arc, has been really fun to watch. And it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, post this issue. So, uh, highly, highly recommend that. And of course, we've got the uh, issue number four of the Arrow book, which is based off the uh, CD CW TV show. Um, you know, been very popular. The show itself is starting to kind of find its own. Uh, the the episodes yeah. have yeah, been yeah, yeah. getting better and better the last <laughs> couple. Uh, 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 Stu <laughs> <not agree>. <laughs> probably hasn't still watched an episode. But, um, so his, his opinion doesn't matter. I did. Yeah, I watched it with, with Vertigo. Not a count. Just 
Vertigo. If you've been enjoying the show, you definitely want to check that <laughs> that book up. And we still do have back issues of that. So if you've been late to that party, uh, you know, there's still time to jump on that. So that's essentially what DC's got on offer. And, uh, you know, some really good books, uh, a few storylines that have been going for a while, like I said, with The Flash uh, that are wrapping up. Uh, Morrison's run is sort of starting to wrap up. So yeah, he's uh, you're starting to see the sort of the, 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 the climaxes of these books uh, are starting to come out. And, and again, DC's now like 17 issues into its uh, into its new 52 reboot. Uh, some of the books are still top notch. Uh, a lot of the creators have of them stayed are. Yeah. on the mm-hmm. books mm-hmm. since issue number one, and it's really good to see that they've sort of gained some traction. Um, and also, I'll point out uh, All Star Western is out this week too. That's a personal favorite of mine. So, uh, and that's still the same writer artist uh, group uh, duo um, working on that book too. And that's that's a that's just a lot of fun. So, you know, DC, you know, you got to give them respect. They've done, they've done a really good job these past couple years with this. Yeah, it's reboot. almost a year and a half into yeah. it, and it's it's still going strong. Strong. So, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, licensed comic books and stuff, stuff that is based on other properties. So, give you a quick rundown on some of the stuff. Uh, Andy Diggle brings us uh, the BBC's Doctor Who series, and ID one of IDW's uh, better books, in my opinion. Um, they license; they have a lot of licenses, oh, yeah. and some <laughs> of them, some of them win, like the Ninja Turtles and the Transformers and Doctor Who. And then there's a lot that lose, so uh, I won't go Star into Trek. those ones. Uh, I'm not mentioning anything. Star Trek's been actually yeah, pretty Star good. Star, but it Star, hasn't Star, 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 Star Trek with Doctor Who? You can't go along with that Actually, one. Oh, you could, yeah. but but <laughs> no, no, like okay. the, oh, uh, the, the assimilation, the Bor- like yeah. the, the Borg and Cybermen teaming up. Come on, that, that's. I'm not giving you anything. I, I did, but I didn't say anything. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, and Marvel Always brings us uh, Castle, uh, the third issue of the Castle series. So again, if you've watched the show, you, they make a lot of comic book references. So I've it's never kinda, watched an episode of Castle. Kind of cool that You're they missing have out. Uh, missing out. a yeah. comic. Yeah. So uh, then a couple of my favorites, a couple Star Wars titles, uh, Dawn of the Jedi. This is an origin story of kind of like the whole origins of the Force and stuff. This is the second series. What's the official countdown for Dark Horse giving up their? I think they have until uh, this year. Like I think Ooh. it goes to end of this year. Yeah, end, end of this year, and uh, yeah. So they got lots of stuff planned. They're re- they're re-releasing some of their stuff in trades. One of my favorite books, probably my favorite Star Wars series, Star Wars Legacy, is coming out in a heart deluxe hardcover. Mm. And so, Star Wars so is selling that. like hotcakes. Yep, the Star Wars uh, new Love series. Star Wars, so pretty cool. So this one, Dawn of the Jedi, my favorite uh, Star Wars creative team. They brought you Legacy, John Ostrander and uh, Jan Dereshma. Really awesome. And also, part five, the last issue of uh, Star Wars Agent of the Empire. Really cool, kind of a James yeah, Bond I like this book a lot. type of empire book. A lot of cameos, Boba Fett's in well, there, Han Solo. What's this? Uh, is, everything. This takes place. This takes place right in uh, probably just after or during episode four era, right bef- before. Uh, so it is the Empire, Rise of the Empire. So it's pretty, co- pretty cool stuff. Uh, and this brings us to uh, DC's Injustice God Among Us uh, video game adaption. Uh, comic book and uh, it made some waves because in the first issue little spoiler alert uh, Superman goes a little bit uh, um, crazy kind of lost yeah, yeah, kind of loses yeah, it yeah. And, and accidentally kills Lois Lane uh, and uh, yeah so it was it was it was pretty it was pretty uh, yeah pretty graphic pretty upsetting but uh, this this book here um, really it's actually really kind of cool it's 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 well written uh, which is a shock for video game adaptation. Yeah, licensed books usually tend to not have the best yeah, <laughs> teams video, on them. Especially yeah. video game ones. And uh, there's a really cool moment in this book and it's it's not s- totally original so I'm going to give you some of the other fe- uh, where it's happened before but uh, basically uh, Superman is just frustrated at the world. He looks at it and he's, he's figured he's done things you know wrong. He hasn't used his power uh, effectively. Uh, effectively. So he goes and he overthrows a tyrant that is, uh, you know, turned on his people and stuff, and he's he's going to kill this guy. And uh, Wonder Woman flies in and says, you know, not like this, Clark. You know, don't don't do like this. You know, clean yourself up. Let's go. Let's do a press conference. Was he drunk or something? Let's no, no. He's just oh, okay. He's, he's so basically he's... fed up. He's just like, okay. You know, I've 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 had it trying to protect. Well, he said the clean world. yourself up. I thought he was just oh like, sorry, oh, 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 like a huge bender. No, no, he's he's not a bender. He, was, he was looking very disheveled. <laughs> okay, he had, he had blood stains <laughs> on him. <and> shaved. <laughs> he's, he's, he's grieving over over what happened to Lois and stuff. And uh, he basically uh, goes in front of the UN and he says, you know. Everybody drops their weapons, or I'll make you do it. Okay, so he's he, had enough. He's he's had enough. He's, he says, he says we, we are gonna now have a ceasefire globally, or I'm gonna make you do it. And it's pretty awesome in that moment because you know Wonder Woman standing beside him, and she's like, "I've waited for you to say this." So it's kind of like that whole. 
they want to she would improve, say that improve the, yeah. improve humanity <laughs> and and kind of lead the way and although not like a new notion we've seen it uh you know in the comic book the authority yeah uh we've seen it in uh super a couple superman story arcs uh, one of them one of my favorite ones camelot falls deals a lot with how much should superman do like uh and uh you know how much how effective is having an alter ego like Clark Kent when you could be Superman 24 7 and really doing something? Mm. So it's really cool that this uh, prequel to the video game is setting up the world. So we're going to know why all these heroes are battling each other. Because I'm pretty sure Batman's not going to be wanting Clark, aka Superman, we all know, to be, you know, messing up the world politically. Well, I think that's crazy, though, because, like, if you really think about it, Batman, he's the most, like, he. He is the most like kind of like, fascist. He, 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 he was kind of fascist amongst those people. He is, kind but, of heroes, but at right? the same time, it's it's he he doesn't want control for control's sake, right? That's and true. I think more so like w- where this is going. If they go down that path, Superman wants to control us for the for the betterment. Yeah. But then you don't you lose a lot of you know your freedoms and stuff. It's the whole toss up is you know yeah. What's the value yeah, of Batman our seems freedom? To be a bit right? More like a back room dealer kind of guy rather than the sort of well. Even well, remember even in uh, it was in Kingdom Come the whole thing was like you know he turned Gotham into a police state like, like, like there's literally like just robots well, patrolling yeah. the world. Being well, like, that's that's <laughs> Batman going to his extreme saying yeah. you know I, I'm going to make this place safe and uh, I'm going to use Batbots to do it. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely a book to check out. This is uh, issue two of of the uh, series, and I'm pretty sure it'll wrap up right before the video game drops. Which will be kind of nice. April. Yeah. They've so, done a yeah. really nice job yeah. with the promotion April. as a video game yeah. as well. They've sort of you know tied it in with the comic book, and it looks like it's going to have you know a little bit more of a story uh, mode than most video games or fighting games tend to. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, if you're a fan of comics, it looks like you know if you read this, you'll be able to sort of get into the game, and the story will continue. I'm so. a big fan of comics. This would be great. Justin, you like comics? Yeah, really? comics and video games. I'm you like both? Kind of. Last win, win. Last thoughts. Uh, I know we talked a little. We didn't mention the Walking Dead trades. Is that the situation? Oh yeah, yeah. We were talking about uh, today being a big day because we got uh, our long-awaited uh, trade paperback restock. And if it's good and in a trade paperback format, we now have it. So it's here. All the last man. All seventeen Walking volumes Dead. of Walking Dead back in. Why the tons last of Batman man? stuff. Yeah, tons please. of Batman stuff. Tons of Batman. Um, we've got some pretty cool uh, image books back in. I think yep. we got Saga back in. We also got Thief of Thieves in, which I had a chance to read and uh, excited to see that. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, gonna be checking that out. Issue fourteen is bringing one of my favorite uh, writers, Andy Diggle, yeah. into the fray. And this is a book that feels like you know Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. It's well, because really, even really the cool. the artist on that book, uh, Sean, Sean Martinborough, Martin yep. he's. Um, he was the artist on Greg Rucka's um, Batman run, where he they used like a really interesting, like you know, two tone palette. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I was just really happy to see him drawing comics again, and his stuff is looking better than ever. And yeah, like I think. So again, if you are interested in picking up the stuff that we've been talking about for the last uh, ten podcasts, yeah, deal with it. It's, it's going to be here. And uh, I noticed you guys have some of the Absolute stuff back there, too, the huge. Oh yes, the DC Absolute editions. Of course, we keep stock of some of the best ones. Well. The things we dub the best, which is clearly the best. Well, listen, taste is not subjective. So let's, yeah. let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yeah, so we got like Absolute Kingdom Come, Absolute Green Lantern Rebirth, yep. Absolute Batman Hush. Uh, you know, probably uh, one, well, my, one of my favorite. Absolute uh, All Star Batman, Batman's still there. You know, so, yep. Yeah. So yeah, lots of good stuff. So now there's the time to come in. There's there's stuff for the mid range, the high end collector, and mm-hmm. and the casual reader. We'll yeah, point you in the right direction. One heck of a coffee book. So yeah, so <laughs> it can may break your table. But nonetheless, it's not an omnibus. It's, it's not a killer man edition. No, it's well, you just... break some walnuts on it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely break a walnut or two. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you all for listening. Uh, where can we find more of you, uh, Andre, on the internet? I plant my roots firmly in the store. I live here. I am a rock. Ah, I'm in the store all the time. We're in Markham Highway Seven in Warden. Sometimes I go on Facebook, Heroes World. Citizen. <laughs> oh, whoa, the enthusiasm. Oh. Maybe, maybe not. He's playing coy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Neil? Uh, I pretty much hang it out on the forums. Uh, I'll have my weekly uh, kind of wrap up of what's coming up. You know, anything we didn't cover today, a um, little bit of a, an outline of some of the trades we did get in stock. And, um, you know, again, I encourage you if you got questions or if I'm not talking about a certain book that you, you've heard hearing about and want to know more about. Hop on, sign up, and uh, ask a question, and I'll answer you. Justin? 
well, my general my general delightfulness can be just seen just about, uh, all about town. But uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, you can find me at uh, this Justin Comic. Uh, yeah, just look for me there. All right, you changed it. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah, not this Justin Forty Two. Yeah, the big reveal was last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a big reveal. Yeah. That was a big change. I, dro- big I dropped my mic on that one. It was pretty huge. We all were. I was gonna laugh, and then I can't anymore. Uh, yeah, he was yeah. gonna laugh, yeah. and then, he, yeah. then him oh, going, oh. oh. All right. Sweet. On behalf of all of us here at the Heroes World Podcast, I'd like to thank you all for listening. So, Andre Greenwich, Neil Speakman, Justin Elliott, myself, Stuart Pay. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you all next week. Catch you all later. <laughs>